Nehemiah chapter 5. There was a great cry of the people and of their wives against the brethren, the, against their brethren, the Jews. All right, we got rid of the enemy of the Arabians, the Ammonites, and Sam and Tobiah. Now we come across another problem. This one's an inner problem. This is a Jew. And you got to realize when you're a Christian and you want to do right, you're going to have enemies all around you. For well, there were that said, We, our sons and our daughters, are many. Therefore we take up corn for them, that we may eat and live. Food. You need food. Some also there were that said, We have mortgaged our lands, vineyards, and houses, that we might buy corn because of the dirt. Alright, so there's a dirt... Dirt is death with an R in the earth. There's no crops. There's uh, very little vegetation. There's probably death of livestock, death of people. And like the time of Joseph, they sell all to get corn. It's almost like uh, a repeat of history for the Jews. They're back in the time of Joseph, in the time of uh, uh, being in Exodus. The Jews should mark this time, should remember that, all right, there's dirt in the land, there's no food, we have to sell everything, we, the Egyptians have to sell everything we got, but God still took care of us. And we got through that. That you had to mortgage everything and, and uh, get loans for food. Listen, you can have all the money in the world, but if God cuts the food supply, you're in trouble. There were also that said. So all these people are coming up. Different groups of people. We have said. We have said. It's almost like the, the book of Job. Here comes one guy. This happened. And here comes somebody else. Well, this happened. Then comes somebody else. This happened. We have borrowed money from the king's tribute. Tax. And that upon our lands and vineyards. Oh, they needed a... Uh, Whatever they needed for the vineyards and for the lands, they had to borrow money. They needed food. They had the mortgage. Now they're in debt. America's in debt. Yet now our flesh is as the flesh of our brethren, our children, as their children. Lo, we bring into bondage our sons and our daughters to be servants. We had to sell our children. For food, or whatever we needed in the heart, in the lands, we had to sit for 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 these mortgages. We had to turn our children over to be servants. And some of our daughters are brought unto bondage already. It's already happened. Neither is it in our power to redeem them. We ain't got the money to buy back our children. For other men have our lands and vineyards. Well, they're in a financial loss here. And here they're trying to build the city. And there's no money. And there's no family. And I was very angry when I heard their cry in these words. Then I consulted with myself. He's talking to himself. Talking to yourself is a Bible thing. You're weighing out the matters, looking at the situation, and thinking it over out loud. And I rebuked the nobles. Well, they're the ones that back there, when we read about the wall, that they didn't really want to do any of the work, but they did some, but they really didn't want to do it. And the rulers. And said unto him, Ye exact usury, which is a violation of the law, it's an interest to use money. Exact means by force. They took advantage of the people. They were supposed to give unto their brethren. They weren't supposed to, to uh, charge them interest. Everyone his brother, Jew, 
They could charge the Gentiles, but they were not to charge their brethren. So they're in violation of the law. And I set a great assembly against them. Numbers. Witnesses. And I said unto them, We, after our ability, have redeemed our brethren, the Jews, which were sold unto the heathen. I mean, they're just selling themselves to the Jews. They're selling themselves to the, he to the heathen. But uh, what we can do, we're going to redeem. We're going to buy back. Or shall they be sold unto us? Then held they, they their peace and found nothing to answer. They couldn't answer Nehemiah. They were wrong. What would make them think that they are one people of all the world? They are God's people. One people. What would make them think, okay, here's some money. You know, you know, just sell me your daughter so, so she can be a servant of mine. I'll just sell her to the Gentiles. I mean, what would what make you do that? And also I said, It is not good that ye do. Ought ye not to walk in the fear of our God because of the reproach of the heathen, our enemies? Listen, you're giving us a bad name. I likewise and my brethren and my servants, my exact of of them money and corn I pray you let us leave off this usury take it off get rid of the interest Exodus 22 25 it's a violation of law restore I pray you to them even this day don't wait right now their lands their vineyards their olive yards and their homes also the hundredth part of the money of the corn the wine and the oil that ye exact of them give it all back to them Plain and simple. Then said they, We will restore them. We will requite nothing of them. So we will do as thou sayest. And I called the priests, took an oath of them, that they should do according to this promise. It's a very serious event. So Nehemiah calls for the priests, the priests being a witness of God. Now, if these guys were to turn around and go against their word, it's between them and the Lord, through the Levites, through the priests. Also, I shook my lap and said, So God shake out every man from his house, from his labor, that performeth not this promise, even thus be he shaken out and emptied. And all the congregation said, Amen, and praised the Lord, and the people did according to this promise. He's saying, listen, I don't want you to say your promise is going to do it and you had your fingers behind your back. Cross. Don't you try to find a loophole in this event. You make a promise. You make a promise before me. You make a promise before the, the priest of God. You make a promise before God. If you don't fulfill it, may God turn your, up, your entire life upside down. Moreover, from the time that I was appointed to be their governor in the land of Judah, from the 20th year even unto the 2 and 30th year of our Xerxes, the king, that is 12 years, interesting number, 12, I and my brethren have not eaten the bread of the governor. In other words, there was a proportion, there was this guaranteed, this great feast of a meal that the kings and the governors and the great people would eat. And Nehemiah doesn't. He's not, he's not living high on the hog, if I can say that, for a Jew. He's not taking advantage of the people. And what he's telling you, what we just read in chapter 5, these people are in great financial difficulty. They're, they got no food. They got no lands and all that. Nehemiah is not a cause of the problem. You can't say, well, Nehemiah, because of his wealth, because, you know, payments, and because of him being a governor of the land, well, you know, he had part in it. You can't say that. Nehemiah did not live above his what, what was given to him. Matter of fact, he didn't even live on what was given to him. He didn't take it. But the former governors that have been before me were chargeable unto the people. The people before me. 
Okay, yeah, they lived off the, the government. They had the government supplies and all that, but not me. And had taken the bread and wine, taxes, the size 40 shekels of silver. Even their servants bear rule over the people. So the governors of the land had people that were under them who were taking the people, making them servants, and making them charge 40 shekels of silver, making them prepare food for them. Nehemiah wasn't like that. But it was the case. But so do so did not I, because because of the fear of God. Yeah, I also continue in the work of this wall. He didn't sit in a in a palace, he didn't sit on a throne, he didn't sit in a municipal building, he was out there working on the wall with him. In other words, he lived the same life that the Jews lived. He didn't take off his clothes but to wash them. He had a weapon in his hand, handling rocks with the other hand. He ate with them. He also had continued the work of this wall. Neither bought me any land. He didn't buy land. And all my servants were gathered there unto the work. Everybody that was under me were working. So Nehemiah didn't, wasn't this prince, and he was a worker. Moreover, there were at my table 150 of the Jews and rulers, besides those that came unto us from among the heathen that are about us. So he didn't live high in the hog. He had 150 people at his table, but it wasn't a, you know, uh, extravagance of meals. Now that which was prepared for me daily. All right, this is what was prepared. This is what his meal was for one day. One ox and six choice sheep. Also fowls were prepared for me. And once in ten days, store of all sorts of wine. So one in ten days, I would get, I would get wine. I could have had wine every day, but I had it once in ten days. Yet for all this required not I the bread of the governor. I didn't eat the fancy foods that we read about in Proverbs. I didn't have the fancy dancy food. I didn't have the high clo high cost meals. I had oxen and sheep and some fowls in every ten days, one in ten days I had wine. Because the bondage was heavy upon this people. I wasn't going to put a more burden upon the people. They're having a hard time. Think upon, my, think upon me, my God, for good, according to all that I have done for this people. And he's like, listen, Lord, I could have done it, but I didn't do it for the people because of the people. I didn't want to put them in more bondage. I wanted to be a help to them. I wanted to be a guidance to them. I wanted to be someone that they can look up and say, Hey, I'm going to do what he's doing. Work. And they couldn't charge him, say, you know, he don't care about the people. He lived, uh, you know, extravagant and all that. He just did what the common person did as a governor. And that ends that short little chapter.